Gym owners, if you aren't running a nutrition program, you're leaving a ton of money on the table. How much? You're going to find out today. Get this. Our 2021 data shows that only 69% of gyms offer nutrition coaching. Just 69%. And these programs generally only generate about 5 or 6% of gross revenue. Nothing, right? Very small percentages. So if you do 20K gross, 6% is nutrition. That's just $1,200. But we all know that nutrition is the other half of the health equation. So if you offer fitness coaching, nutrition coaching is the perfect complement. It's good for your clients and it's good for your business. So to help you fire up the program today, I've got Clark Hibbs of Yellow Rose Fitness with me here on Two Brain Radio. I'm Mike Workington, your host. Please subscribe and follow along. Now, Clark crushes nutrition down in Houston, Texas, and he's going to tell you exactly how he does it because you're leaving money on the table. Clark isn't. We're going to help you out right now. So before we jump in, Go to gymownersunited.com, and if you want advice and support from a helpful community and Chris Cooper himself, that's the place to do it, gymownersunited.com. Clark, welcome to the show. How's Texas? Well, you know, we finally got our first little bit of uh, fall. It was below 60 degrees this morning, and it was too cold for me. So we're, we're pretty frigid down here, below 60 degrees. But besides that, you know, everything's great. All right. Well, let's put some meat on the bones. Let's uh, let's eat a big pile of uh, advice stew here, and let's see what we can talk about. I need well, to get too not. Get... too not too big of a pile. We need to make that make sure that it's moderate, you know, moderate calories for sure. We'll, we'll zone it. We'll zone it and do our macros <laughs> and all that. So how important, you know, all jokes aside, how important is nutrition, is your nutrition program to your business? Like, can you give us any numbers that put these things in perspective? So listeners will understand that five or 6% of revenue is not a good thing for a gym. Yeah. I mean, I can't remember the last time we've done five or 6%. We are averaging month over month. It kind of depends based on quarters, like in quarter, you know, two and three, when people are on summer vacation or whatnot, we might be around that 18 to 20% uh, mark. But like right now, I mean, just looking at last month in September, we did 20% of our gross revenue in nutrition. And we've had months that have been upwards of 25, 26%. Okay. So those are, that's huge. So gyms that are doing like five or 6%, they're just not doing enough nutrition because this is such a complimentary service if you're running a fitness business and your low Correct. months are like a multiple of the average, you know, for a gym in our state of the industry study, which is coming out soon, guys, you can get that. And we'll tell you how, when it's time. So follow us on social media. So let's, let's break it down. And I want you to help people improve their number from five to six to like, you know, start for 10 and 15 and a little bit higher. Have you always offered nutrition coaching? And if, you know, if not, when did you start? So, but before I go any further with that, I mean, my wife is our head nutrition coach and mm -hmm. she is, she is the one who is behind the keyboard all day, making sure that she's training and or checking in with all of her clients. And she is, that is not her sole job with the gym, but I'd say that it is 80 to 85% of her job. She does the nutrition coaching. And I think that that is a huge aspect of that. But anyway, back to your question. Um, no, we did not always do nutrition program. In okay. fact, we actually used to, we actually used to work for a different nutrition company as contractors for them. We, we owned our gym and then we also worked for them. And then after we, you know, gained a little bit of experience there, we were thinking, wait, what, what are, what are we doing? Why aren't we offering this in-house? And we were able to make that transition. We're still on, on great terms and a great relationship with that company and that company's founder. And, um, He's been incredibly supportive of us as well. And then now we were able to sort of transition all that experience and all of that, you know, all those reps that we built helping people with their nutrition into our own um, business. And the best part about it was it's not like we took a bunch of clients or anything like that. We learned how to talk about nutrition. We learned how to coach, which I think is the biggest thing that most gym owners are missing is not being able to properly coach nutrition. And we were able to implement our own systems in order to make sure that our members and our clients got the best experience possible when it comes to something so personal and so emotional like nutrition. So you started at zero, zero mm -hmm. percentage of revenue, and you ramped that up. When did you put this program in and what were the first stage? What did the first stages look like? And I'll ask you a follow-up question to that. Was it good at the start or did it have to evolve? So when and what? So we started coaching nutrition in 2018 and then we mm -hmm. brought it in-house into Yellow Rose at the end of 2020 end of 2020 or beginning of 2021. I can't remember the exact days. Um, and there's been a lot of iterations okay. since then. Um, but what we, you know, it started out pretty slow, but then after we started, see, after those first few early adopters started seeing progress, and we were able to showcase that those people were seeing progress. That's whenever things just sort of took off. And now we're, you know, at that steady, that steady percentage of our gross revenue. 
I'm going to ask you for advice at the end, but I got to ask you one right now. People are thinking, okay, so it starts slow. How do you skip the starting slow part? Is there a way that you've discovered that'll save listeners the time? Can you help them get there faster? No, I really, I really don't think that that's the thing. I mean, the, the thing that that most of the listeners might be looking for is like, hey, how do I do this jump start or how can I do this big challenge or how can I do anything? We have not once at Yellow Rose ran any sort of kickstart challenge, anything. Um, and that's know. more that's more for my, you know, from our personal philosophy of things, we don't want nutrition to be thought of as as something that has this end date to it. We don't want to have people feel like, oh, I need to do this six week challenge so that way then I can mess around for 12 weeks and then do another six week challenge. Like we don't want that. We want this to be a, a coaching service that is, you know, sustainable, not, not sustainable. That is just a part of their uh, monthly experience with us. So that way, so that way they always have that accountability in their corner and we treat it as such. We make sure that whenever we go through their goal setting sessions, that they know that we're not here to help you lose 20 pounds in six weeks. We don't, we don't want to do that. In fact, we're happy with just 1% of body weight a week maybe as like our max way that we want us to lose. And I think that more, the more people that get to experience that, the more they realize that, oh, wow, this is actually sustainable. And the best part is after they lose the weight or gain the weight, whatever their goal might be, they're able to sustain that. They don't feel like they have to constantly keep coming back to a challenge or constantly keep coming back to any sort of diet. They are in, they've made the life changes. They've learned, they've been educated, and now they can actually sustain that for the rest of their lives. But It was not, oh, sorry to cut you off. No. It was def, It was definitely not a fast start because like all good things, like you don't hit overnight success. It took a while to, to get this up to where it needs to be. And it took a lot of, um, you know, tons and tons of coaching from my wife to make sure that all these members were, uh, you know, reaching their goals, meeting their goals and learning new things and, and being challenged enough to actually see the, see the right progress, see the results. I'm going to guess, though, that with that plan, you're talking about long term sustainable programs, Mm -hmm. you probably have better retention than a nutrition kickstart or six week challenge, right? Oh, my gosh, it's it's huge. I mean, I think our length of engagement or our leg um, for our nutrition clients is close to nine months. Yeah. Okay. So there's, that's a huge, huge thing. Listeners, if you are thinking about running nutrition challenge at six weeks and it's going to be a one and done revenue spike, it's cool if you need that revenue real bad, but don't look at that as the basis of your program. Clark is telling you is that a long-term sustainable play is going to increase length of engagement, which means people are going to change their lives, which is your goal as a gym owner and your gym is going to benefit. And not only does it increase the length of engagement for just nutrition members, we've noticed that our gym members that have added in uh, nutrition, it's increased their length of engagement as well, because all of a sudden when they lose 10, 12, 15, 20 pounds, oh, wow, I feel better in the gym. I enjoy working out more. I'm recovering better. I'm sleeping better. I'm happier. And all of it is thanks to our fitness facility. So people are seeing PRs and success, a visible body changes, I'm sure, but they're also seeing like, you know, it's easier to do pull-ups when you drop 15 pounds. So they're seeing like yeah. better times, like all these mi- markers, all these milestones of success are now appearing for clients at a faster rate. And they've got both nutrition markers and fitness markers. It equals a stronger program, which equals better results and better results equal retention, right? So like, do you yeah. know your overall length of engagement for your entire, your gym as a whole, not just nutrition? Yeah. So we have a length of engagement of 28 months right now, which is huge. really awesome. That is yeah, huge. really awesome. Have you, you may not know the answer to this, but I'll ask anyway, have you, did you notice that increase significantly when the nutrition program came in? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay. hundred percent. Because we have some people that, you know, nutrition is so funny because it's a lot like, it's a lot like personal finance. I mean, it, the, the, it's so hand in hand with personal finance. We all know that we need to, you know, spend we, you know, we need to not live, live above our means, but so many people do that. That's why so many of us in the world are in debt. And then the same thing with nutrition. We know we don't need to eat more, but for some reason we do. That's and tasty. So all of a we're, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> delicious. And so we're living above our means. And, and so by, we have so many of our nutrition clients that they don't even talk about when they're going to stop nutrition coaching. My wife is just their nutrition coach, just like they have a finance person, just like they have a insert whatever service that you need in order to make sure that you see results with that. We just become a non-negotiable in their monthly expenses. Now, do you have, do you have a breakdown in your mind of hybrid clients like nutrition and fitness together versus just nutrition clients? Do you have any idea on that? 
I don't have the exact numbers on that. We have more um, hybrid clients of gym and nutrition than, than just nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have, I mean, I'd say it, just thinking of the numbers, I actually just looked at the numbers before this, trying to be prepared here. I'd say it's about split 50-50 there. Yeah. Um, luckily with our previous experience and with our reach on with our, our personal Instagrams and, and Facebooks and whatnot, we are able to take this nutrition coaching aspect of it and have it be global. We literally have a client in Australia. We have a client in Japan. We have a client in Germany. And that's pretty cool to say our fitness, our little fitness business in Houston, Texas is actually global, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's all done very simply via email and, and some Google sheets. Okay. We're going to get into that in just a second. Yeah. I want to point. Yeah. I want to know the exact details, but let's just want to point a few things out for you. First, you've got nutrition only clients. This is a completely different revenue stream. Chris Cooper mm -hmm. advises you generate different revenue streams, not a million of them, but three or four really strong ones and build them up. Nutrition is a good one. So let's say you have a just nutrition clients. That is awesome because if there's a gym closure, they can send the nutrition. And we had gym Absolutely. closures the last two years, right? That was a tough one. Second yeah. thing, if you have nutrition hybrid clients, right, where they're doing fitness and nutrition, you've got built-in retention. Clark has the data that says that is true. It also increases your average revenue per member, which is a huge deal. They're paying more for fitness and nutrition. Increased length of engagement plus increased average revenue per member, leg and arm, incredible multipliers in the fitness world. This is where successful gyms make huge money and get great results for their clients. You can't miss this. It is a really, really important thing for you. So now, and, I, no, go ahead. Well, yeah, and and jumping in, in there too. I mean, our, our main revenue services or our main revenue streams are group, group fitness, personal training, nutrition, coaching, and then our youth program. Solid. And we have, and we have at least 12, at least 12 members right now, just off the top of my head that are a part of group fitness, personal training, and nutrition coaching. We have, we have at least 12 members that are paying anywhere from 700 to $1,200 a month um, just for our services. Gym owners, if you're sitting here saying, holy crap, $700 a month for one client, I could never get that. You can start by combining nutrition and fitness and that the rate for that, I'm going to guess, I'm just going to throw it out there that you could probably start at around 300 bucks. That would not be yeah. outside the realm of possibility. I know gyms are charging much more for it because it is a very important service, mm -hmm. but don't mm -hmm. think that 700 bucks is impossible. It is doable. The other thing I want to point out before we get into the nitty gritty is this nutrition scales faster than fitness because you don't need more barbells. You don't need more space. You don't need all this heating, electricity, all this other stuff. You just basically need some form of communication. That's pretty much it. You can have clients. Mm -hmm. My wife has the exact same situation as Clark does clients anywhere in the world who work with a nutrition coach online. We have in-person clients. We have people who do fitness and nutrition. Nutrition scales really fast. And the final thing you can hire someone to do this at a 44% four ninths model situation where this coach generates revenue and takes a percentage of revenue. So it's not like I have to coach, pay coaches to, you know, uh, wages to coach classes. They're generating revenue and getting a percentage of that. So everyone eats more because there's more to eat. Okay. Yep. More Clark, pie. Talk about, you said it was a simple program. Mm -hmm. Let's people are sitting there saying, I never do this. I don't understand. That's why I didn't have a nutrition program at the beginning. No idea how to do it. Simplify it. What did gym owners need to make a nutrition program happen? Well, first they need basic education on nutrition and not just basic education on a textbook, but there really is a real life experience that goes behind it because we can all look up the textbooks and know all the things in the world, but you know, the textbook definition of how you're going to see nutritional success for the, you know, the 25 year old single guy who has all the time in the world is going to be a whole lot different than the busy dad or the busy mom or, or the CEO or the whoever, these people that have real life time constraints. So actually understanding how, like, even if they're not doing the perfect things, like don't let, don't let good be the enemy of great or whatever that saying is, you know, I, I, you, you probably know what I'm saying there, but you know, for most people, being good enough or being just good is good enough as far as letting them or allowing them to see progress. And a lot of times I see nutrition coaches try to make sure that their clients are being perfect when at the end of the day, that's not what's necessary. They just need to be consistent, which is again, why we don't do the try to be perfect for six weeks sort of challenges. We do the, Hey, it's all good. Let's make sure we can do this for a long time. Um, so the basic education is there. And then also really, I mean, what they need to get started, they just need to talk about it. I need to talk about it a lot. The only way that you're going to actually get some clients is if you're actually talking about your nutrition, talking about um, 
how you're going to help people, giving people helpful tips, posting a lot of content, free advice, and making sure people say, hey, I actually want to do this with you. Listeners, check your local jurisdiction. Just find out what you're allowed to do with nutrition. The laws vary. They're weird all over the place. So do do that legwork first. Figure out what you need. There's some things you can and cannot do in certain states and certain jurisdictions around the world. Do check that out. So you're going to have to do that legwork. But know this, nutrition coaching doesn't have to be meal plans and macros and all this other stuff, meal, co- meal, you know, nutrition coaching, a good program can just be habits based, right? Where you're just saying, I want you to eat vegetables at every meal for a week straight. Stick yeah, with that. I mean, my, my wife has, cl- yeah. I mean, my wife has clients that are. Oh, we froze there. We'll wait till Clark picks up here. Eat something green. Eat something green today. Clark, oh, I'm going gotta... to stop you there. Something oh, uh, no. you froze. You were going to pick up. We're going to edit here, and that's fine. Our, our editor will clip okay, it. Cool. You're going to start with my wife has clients, and then tell that story. Is that cool? Yeah, absolutely. Let me change over my Wi-Fi real fast because I just realized I'm on the weaker one. Hold on, real quick. Let me see if it. If it drops, just come back in. Are we back? I got you. Yeah. So if we're good to go, then better now. Okay. My wife has clients. I mean, my wife has clients that are, you know, training for Ironman right now. They're doing long endurance stuff, which that is actually really nutritionally complicated, trying to figure out how many carbs, fats, proteins they need while they're going on a three hour bike ride. I mean, that's going to be very different than someone who's trying to fuel up, you know, to get through their day at work. Very, very different. And then she also has clients that are literally, you know, the only goal is I want you to eat something green today. And I want you to take a 30 minute walk. I mean, really, I I think that one of the biggest things we can do as an industry is to stop talking about nutrition coaching and just talking about and start talking about it more as lifestyle coaching, because at the end of the day, that's really what it needs. All we're trying to do is get, getting people to move consistently, getting people to be aware of what they're eating and then making sure that people are also aware that their, their behaviors are what, um, you know, their behaviors are what impacts their goals. There's a lot of people out there that, that think, oh, I'm not eating a whole lot, but they haven't tracked it. So then actually we do know that. Or there's a lot of people that say, oh, I'm being really good, but are they being really good? And why are we actually talking about this food in a, in a moral stance? Like what is good? And so there's a lot of digging really deep with people individually to make sure that we are giving them a truly customized program for that person. I mean, we have a basic template, which I'm sure we're going to kind of get into on how we do things. But at the end of the day, it is all 100% customizable. Just like, I mean, if we're talking CrossFit here, all your workouts are scalable and modifiable. Your nutrition needs to be the exact same way as well. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that complicated, listeners. No. The average person in North America is not very fit, doesn't move very much, and doesn't eat very well. So literally... If you just get someone moving a little bit more and eating more vegetables, that is a huge step in the right direction. And there's value in that. Their health will improve and then they'll start going further. And then eventually you might be able to get into like snatch grip, high pulls with 60% of max for like, you can get into the complicated stuff later on. You don't have to do it at the beginning and you don't have to be nutrition wizard to start with this. So give me, give me, give me the very basics of the program and you don't have to reveal the trade secrets and so forth, but tell me (laughs) what is in your program and how can other gym, what can they steal from you? to just like get a start on this thing. Yeah. So we definitely, I mean, if we were to put like a, like a identity behind it, we would say that we're a a macro based, you know, macronutrient based nutrition coaching uh, just because we think that it's very simple and very, very, you know, scalable and, and sustainable for people. It's very, it's very easy for people to kind of digest that and understand that. Um, but really what it is, is it's, it's one-on-one weekly nutrition coaching. We get a general intake form from them. We know, Hey, what are your goals? What are we doing? My wife does an intro call with them to make sure that we're on the same page and everything. And she lays out the guidelines, lays out the do's and don'ts. We send them a FAQ, some frequently asked questions, send them a little nutrition guide that helps them like, Oh, how do I weigh my food? Oh, here's how you weigh your food. How do I track my food? Here's how you track your food. And then my wife gives them basically unlimited email access. We don't do cell phones or text messages, just that way we can have a little bit of work-life balance on that. Um, and then they have a day each week that they are supposed to check in. So my wife has clients that check in on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, and they send in their seven days of tracked food. And then she gives them, you know, they, she's, they send in their seven days of tracked food. They also say, hey, here's what's going really well. Here's what's not. 
here's what I need help with, or here's what was great. We talk about bright spots in that as well. And then she makes any adjustments if necessary, does all the coaching need bees, starts those conversations and, uh, and then sends them on their way for their next week. And this is done through Google sheets and in person uh, at times or by email. No, in person. It's all Google Sheets. It's all okay. it's all email. I mean, the initial call is going to be a Zoom call, yep. but it is literally all virtual. So the world is your market. That's a great thing. Uh, your yep. office space could be your bathroom if you so desired. <laughs> I mean, I am in my guest bedroom right now. This is where she works. <laughs> So there you go. I mean, guys, listeners, like if you're looking for a way to generate some additional revenue, this is kind of a slam dunk where you've already got a captive market that wants and needs this service in your members. And then you've got the entire world who is, you know, not suffering with health in, in general. You can do this with a Google sheet and zoom or email. Uh, there are Absolutely. other platforms around. My wife does use, I believe she uses some, uh, some, uh, I think she uses my macros plus and my fitness pal. Potentially. I think she also yep. uses uh true coach if I'm not mistaken, but true coach they, is great. yeah, the details are irrelevant because there are many of these platforms that will do versions of it. You just have to find the stuff that you want. There's nothing wrong with using just a Google sheet and email. Yeah. You can certainly ramp things up with some in-person meetings. If you so desire for people who are local, you could do in-body testing. If that was something you decided or any mm -hmm. other biometric, the important thing though is to measure something the client cares about not something you care about chris cooper has been very firm on that because if people don't care about losing weight don't measure their weight you know that's a really good point too that that last point because we have we find that so many of our members while they initially think they want to lose weight what they actually want to do is just get rid of their food anxieties you know we're coming up around the holidays with thanksgiving and, and christmas and all the other holidays and whatnot and people are, people are scared. They're, they're yes. scared that they're going to put on five to 10 pounds. And, you know, I think, oh, that's silly, but no, people are truly terrified about, about these next, you know, you know, six to eight weeks. And we're here to help and show them like, here's how you navigate that. Here's how you make sure that you leave the family gathering, not feeling terrible. Here's how you can step on the scale January 1st and go, oh, cool. I'm right on track rather than, oh crap. I'm, you know, th there went the holiday fluff again. Um, and so not putting our own biases towards people is huge because not everyone needs to lose weight. Not everyone wants to gain weight. You know, there, there's so many different things that you can work for your people. My wife has clients to confirm what you said. She has clients who want to lose weight. She has clients that want to gain muscle. She has clients that run, mm -hmm. run marathons and do all sorts of fitness competitions, CrossFit people, weightlifting people. The goals vary. And her approach varies, but what it really comes down to is helping them with habits. With certain people, it might be more specific in terms of, look, we want you to eat more protein to, you know, and lift this kind of weight to gain the muscle you want. With other people, it's a more basic, hey, we were using the plate model. I want you to start filling half your plate with vegetables. This is going to be lean protein and just the basics of stuff where people need to find some wins and move. So you Absolutely. do not have to be an elite, you know, dietitian or macronutrient counter or any of that stuff. You just have to be, you have to be able to change behavior. And as a I CrossFit think, fitness coach, you already are. And you have to be able to like properly listen and also, yeah. and also kind of read between the lines a little bit, because a lot of people will say one thing, but they don't actually mean that. It's just something that they've heard so much. And now we're having to help them unlearn and we're having to teach them new things. And also we, we can't be afraid to ask tough questions. There's a lot of hard conversations that need to have like one conversation that, that I didn't realize I was going to have so much with people whenever I started nutrition coaching was like the the topic around alcohol and yeah. the, the, you know, oh, oh man mm. uh, especially after 2020 and the the question that I started having to ask people is okay you know especially when it comes to let's just use a single you know type of beverage for example let's use beer you know especially since the craft beer scene is huge and whatnot it's like I like okay beer. Do you, I love me some beer um it is you know the question is okay do you like craft beer or do you like to drink and because there's it's very different if you like craft beer you have no problem taking a few sips enjoying the flavors enjoying the profile everything pouring it out and moving on with your life if you like to drink that means that you're putting away eight to twelve beers on a saturday afternoon and enjoying that feeling and you know whatever floats your boat but we need to make sure that our actions are in line with our goals and if your goal is to lose weight we don't need eight to twelve beers on a Saturday, there's nothing wrong with having a sip or two, enjoying that flavor profile and then moving on. But that's where we really have to come down to changing the habits, changing the behaviors and having people be very honest with themselves, which people don't like doing. 
I agree with you. And it's just, it is all habits formation and lifestyle changes, which is what you do as a fitness coach already becoming a nutrition mm-hmm. coach, not that far, big a step. So let's change some lives here and let's give away like $10,000 yeah. to a listener. Yeah. Walk me through, like if it, let's say like, I'm just, I walk up to you and I'm like, Clark, holy crap, you making 20% of your revenue from nutrition. I don't have a clue where to start. Let's lay out. What would you tell me? What would you just say? If I have, I'm starting at zero nutrition coaching at my gym. What would you tell me to do? I would say start posting helpful nutrition content on your business page, on your personal page, on your email list, on your everything. You have to talk about it because so with, with the realm of pseudoscience and garbage and, and, and fit teas and all these certain supplements out there that are and wraps and all that BS out in the world, you need to be the authority. You need to be the person that people trust when it comes to their nutrition advice and your first tons of posts. I mean, I can't even, I can't even try to quantify how many posts I've made about nutrition aren't going to generate anything, but then all of a sudden you make that one post or, or someone says, Oh, wow, I really liked what you posted. I started doing it. I started seeing some changes. Now I want to sign up with you and really take this to the next level. That one person could be your next before and after picture that you post it says, Hey, look how I helped, you know, Johnny so-and-so, now he looks amazing. Who else wants this? And now you have the proof and then things are going. So you have to talk about it. You have to put yourself out there. You have to be the authority in your area. Guys, I'm going to give you a couple of quick media things that you can do. This is not protein. There's a post for you. And all you do is you lay out common items that people think are protein, but aren't. Peanut butter. That's the one I was going to say, right? (laughs) People think peanut butter is high in protein. Terrible. Right? Like just... It might seem basic for you. It's not basic for everyone. So lay out some stuff, like some obvious things, or you know, yeah. what is a good sort? Like, what are? Why do we need vegetables? Again, sounds yeah. silly to you and me, but many people do not know the answer to that because think about hyper palatable fast food delivered by you know incessant advertising. Mm-hmm. That's what you're combating. So and do that one. Go ahead, Clark. I was going to say do that, but you know the hard part is doing it in a in a tone and in a voice that is relatable and not so you know i'm talking down to you when it comes you don't want to shame anybody exactly no no we don't want to shame and we like to be relatable as well i mean if you have your own weight loss story that's something that people really want to hear about if you have your own struggles people really want to hear about it if you you know if you always find yourself struggling with x People want to know about it, talk about it. So that way they know how you fixed it. They can start trying it as well. And then all of a sudden you've helped them and you've gained their trust. And that leads to my second idea, which is experiential stuff like my favorite post-workout protein snack, my favorite breakfast, my favorite healthy breakfast when I'm rushed to get out the door. Perfect. My best healthy snack for my kids. Stuff like that is huge. If you start posting that stuff, people will start listening and they will start to regard you as an expert. So starting with just talking about nutrition, the second part is if you're going to, so what would you do from there? If, what would you do if you were going to start, start selling a nutrition program at a gym, you're going to tell, advise me Mm -hmm. to do it. How would you set that up? What would be the, what would be the basic service plan? The basic service plan would be weekly accountability check-ins. Okay. Truly. True. Because at the end of the day, we know you can, the meal plans don't work because people after they're given them, after they're, after they get the meal plan, they don't have any accountability to it. After the first week, they don't care. They fall off. So getting that weekly accountability and then really going above and beyond to make sure that these people know that they are, you know, being held accountable. So, you know, if they, if your client is supposed to check in on Mondays, on Thursdays, give them a second, you know, quote unquote, free accountability check and just, Hey, how's it going? You know, just that way they know that you're there, you're in their corner. So weekly accountability um, check-ins would be a really, really fantastic start. It doesn't have to be a crazy program. It doesn't have to guarantee any biometric marker success or anything like that, but nutritional accountability, which will build their consistency, which will give them their results. So you meet with your clients, you find out what they want to accomplish. You give them some habits or a plan according to what's allowed in your jurisdiction and Mm -hmm. your skill set, and you give them that plan to help them accomplish their goals. And then you check in with them weekly. Now there are listeners out there who are going to say that doesn't sound like enough. Clark, you have done a crap ton of nutrition sales in your business. Is that plan actually worth, at least valuable for clients? That's literally our plan, Mike. (laughs) That's literally our plan. That's what we do. And yet people will say it's not enough. And and we just, we just added a 
platinum <laughs> nutrition coaching option, yeah. which is two check-ins a week. That's it. So we, we, I mean, so our, our base, our base, you know, uh, nutrition coaching is a once a week check-in. Our platinum version is twice a week check-in. That's it. Listeners do not overthink this. Clark has no. given you the keys to at least $10,000 of additional revenue per year and probably a lot more if you follow this plan and take some steps to do so. That's it. And, you know, one of, one of the other things that is really beneficial too is experiencing nutrition coaching yourself. Um, I, I work with a nutrition coach. My wife works with a nutrition coach and it is, it's basically like mentorship and you get to learn how they do it. You get to learn like, Oh, I like the way this, that this system works from the client facing side. And then it's easier for you to, you know, turn it into your own thing that, that people will love. Would you advise people to work with their spouse as a nutrition coach? Do you do that? Absolutely not. (laughs) No way. My wife slapped my beer out of my hand and you know, Uh -uh. No, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Uh, So maybe listeners, maybe don't do that, but that is great advice. If you want to learn more about nutrition coaching, work with a nutrition coach. And let's Mm -hmm. be real here. It's not uh, a stealing client situation. There are millions and millions of people in the world who need nutrition coaching. We are not looking for clients. We just need to find ways to serve them and connect with them. They're out there. We're not stealing clients here. No. I mean, if you get, if you get 50 clients paying 150 a month, you're in a really, really solid position. What do you, do you, uh, do you mind telling us what you charge for nutrition coaching? If it's a yeah. secret, you keep it one, 150 a month. There you go. And so for we, for weekly accountability check-ins and then our platinum option is 250 a month. And if you, uh, if you are your hybrid, what will that run? Do you know that one off the top of your head? So the hybrid, every, the hybrids are all customizable depending yeah, okay. on what frequent, from what, depending on what frequency of PT or group or, or nutrition. Well, like 300 always, to 700 bucks probably. Huh? Well, you know, if we have an unlimited membership at $200 and they add nutrition, they're 350. So gym you know, owners. We keep the, it really simple. Yeah. That is the key takeaway from this. Gym owners are not doing enough nutrition coaching in their gyms. They are leaving money on the table. You can make more by following a simple plan. Clark has laid it all out here for you. You can take it, run with it, and you will make money. Clark, thank you so much for opening, uh, you know, pulling us behind the curtain to show us and tell us what yeah. you do. You've, you're going to make a lot of gym owners happy. Good. And uh, I, hope they make, I hope they make a lot of their clients happy. That is it. That was Clark yeah. Hibbs on Two Brain Radio. Thank you so much for listening. Please take action on this. Help some clients with nutrition and help your business. Please hit subscribe also on the way out, wherever you're watching or listening. 